I uh, do want to say Merry Christmas, and uh, I'm super bullish. There was one comment I do want to add is that, you know, I see a huge opportunity with this. Um, you know, everybody's uh, – I see. I think I think with the Polygon thing, the main concern I've seen from, from people is how – uh, underused it is in compared to other blockchains like eat like like the main main net uh, but what I see is an opportunity you know provided nobody should be over invested as long as you're within your risk tolerance I'm holding my use I'm, I'm I'm along for the ride I think this is an opportunity to see something you know when you see something really magical happen in 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 web 3 in the nft space it's when new ground is broke and um, that's what I see happening here so with that being said, I just want to say Merry Christmas, and uh, I'll pass the mic uh, back to the pros. Merry All right, Christmas, thank you bro. for that. Thank Merry you, man. Christmas to you. Yeah, that's the thing. I'll, I'll just comment on it really quick. Like, uh, man, I do think that people sometimes fail to see some of the really core mechanisms that drive volume and activity in the space. And, and typically, a lot of the things that get a lot of traction are things that are honestly like noteworthy or newsworthy. And uh, everything about what we're going to do here is going to be a pretty big deal. And so, like, again, I mean, I, people are going to fucking do what they're going to do. But it's just uh, pre pretty interesting to me that people are this bearish on something that they have such little information about. And, uh, yeah, man, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm, I'm fucking I, I, I'll come back to it again. I'm more I'm more confident right now on our Polygon strat than I am on our mainnet ETH strat. Although I think we're going to crush on on mainnet. But, uh, yeah, it's like I don't know what to say, dude. Polygon is ripe for the fucking taking. And let's go. Let's go. Crush. I think. I, I think, you know, I think what um, we, we I think some of us were saying is some of the, the frustration lies is um, uh, that uh, we know how much you were a uh, sort of a, a, a thought leader in in trying to onboard people to Solana and, you know, have talked about why you like Solana and why it's a great blockchain and why you like the builders and why you like to build here. And I think what I think what created a lot of uneasiness is like, well, why is Frank going to Polygon? Is he is he as bullish on Polygon for the same reasons or different reasons? And I think having like a clear communication to people to like know like what's what like why Polygon like would be a huge huge help to people because a lot of the the concerns are are just basically like you said it's out of uh, not knowing uh, much about it. Yeah, yeah Frank, maybe things. like... Oh, I'll go for it? Go ahead, go ahead. No, I think it's one of these things where I, if anyone has known how we operate for even more than just a month, right? I think we are by far the most transparent team like in the game. Like I think there's that's one thing we can claim the fucking trophy for, for sure. And uh, there's no world where I'm not going to clarify and share our entire strategy with our community and honestly to the public. It's, it's more like it's Christmas, we, we felt really excited about making this announcement and, and, and really setting the tone, right? That, hey, like we're committed to doing this in 2023. But I've learned a lot in my last year plus of doing the game. And you never want to sandwich like five fucking bullish announcements all together, right? So like we still have a lot of the stuff on the incubator launchpad stuff that's going to come out over the next week or two. We have like a lot of the roadmap stuff for youth and D-Gods coming out early January. And so for me, I've like learned the hard way uh, and, and learn from successful results that it's actually better to piece apart information that you deliver to the community on an official capacity. So it's just a tactic, right? It's just a strategy. And that, that's what we're doing here at the end of the day. Like it, I'm down to talk about it in spaces. I'm down to be super transparent about pretty much anything. But when it comes to official announcements, I, I try to guard that and, and do that in the most exciting way, which is why I think we have such a strong hit record of like, when we make announcements, they kind of break the internet, right? And I, I care a lot about that record, and I want to protect that. And so, yeah, to me, I don't mind talking about it in spaces, talking about it in Discord, talking about it on Twitter replies. But when it comes to official announcements, we take that strategy really seriously. And so the next one that we do around the incubator is going to break the internet again. And, like, then the next one on the roadmap, it's going to break the internet again. And so I'm, like, I'm down to sequence this stuff out versus just blowing our load on one go. For sure. For and sure. and my last question, who made that video? Was that you, Frank? Yeah. <laughs> sure. He's like me. He likes to do everything himself. Just give him a break. Chill. <laughs> Listen, I, I just want to know who made it. And, and it's fine, Frank. You'll you'll get better. Like it's it's good you're working your craft though. 
I just, you know, I'm, I'm a numbers yeah, guy, man. I think he's doing, I, I think he's doing all right right now. Let's see how it goes overnight. All right, cool, cool. Um, yeah, let's go to some hands here. I had to rotate some speakers. If you don't have your hand up, I'm gonna uh, assume you don't have anything to say, so we'll rotate you down. Um, we'll go to, uh, let's go to Gride here. What's up, Gride? Yeah, what's going on, guys? Merry Christmas, and first everybody. Of all, please uh, keep it below a minute, guys. Let's rotate through these real quick. Right, yeah ahead. so just keep it keeping it quick um like i think that this move is 100 percent on band it just it makes total sense I, I love the polygon thing it's not surprising to me at all because i've actually spoken to a lot of people polygon have uh, spoken to people the ticket master like i'm the head of it he's a ticket master and like frank was saying just it makes i'm not surprised by it, it makes a lot of sense but of the brand they have there and uh basically it's like the trajectory that that they've had i do think it's it's right for the taking and it's not easy to do deals with large companies like that and if you have a foot in the door it's just going to be so much so much easier because a lot of things don't, don't matter like he was saying if you want to do a deal with a company like that if it's not easy to do it's just not gonna <clears throat> it's not gonna happen and yeah, I don't know. I just I wasn't surprised by it at all. I don't really have a question or anything, but that's just my take. I think it's awesome. And congrats to the team. All right, thank you, Greg. Thank you, Greg. We'll go to uh, NFT Head NFT right away. Go ahead. What's up, you guys? Uh, GM Frank, uh, Kevin, the team, uh, Morgan. I see you there with your. You don't have to check smile. in with every person. You can go straight to the point. Thank you. Oh my God! Why so serious? There's Anyways, like 20 for the polygon <laughs> thing, people all want to ask. Man, fuck people it, fuck. Ask. Okay, I'm well, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? Uh, let's go with uh, Tout. Yo, what's good? Uh, listen, Frank, man, I've I've seen how you op- you've operated, man, and I-, I think you're fucking genius in terms of. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give you too many flowers, man. Let, let's just move on to the question. We've seen time and time again, you know, after what happens after Dust Labs and D God make a controversial announcement. So, and, and this is kind of not related to Polygon. Well, it's not related to Polygon and Ethereum. It's just the announcement itself. I'm curious. Do you take the post mortem of your announcements into consideration before you make an announcement, like what everyone talks about, and like does that ever change your your path moving forward? after like you hear what everyone says and um, you know, your, your holders and non holders alike. Yeah. I think it's all interesting. I, I look at it all as like data collection. My favorite thing to do is uh, just read. Um, I spend most of my time on Twitter. It's funny because I do reply to a lot of stuff and I'm pretty active, but I, I spend most of my time just digesting what people are saying. And I think in this scenario, it's uh, I don't know, dude, I just get pumped, man. Cause it's like, Everybody on my timeline is dunking on me. And the last time everyone on my timeline was dunking on me was like during the tubes mint. And then after the tubes mint, it was during the youth reveal. And it's like, you know, the fucking price goes down for fucking 20 minutes. Everyone's like, yo, Frank fucking sucks. It's over. The hype Ponzi is finally over. And then it's like, bro, zoom out for a year. Right. It's like, I think we're, we're, uh, we know what we're doing to a certain degree. And, uh, in this scenario, it's, it's even more uh, potent to me because, yeah, man, there's a lot of feelings involved at the end of the day. Like, there's a lot of emotions here. And uh, I, I'm trying to just be a practical person and, and look at our decisions from, from a logical basis. And to me, again, I just make the point, like, you know, right now, Polygon is, is like almost double the market cap of Seoul. Uh, they really don't have a PFP or NFT community there. We have access to a ton of really solid brands. And uh, we're going to make history by doing this bridge. And on top of that, um, I think that I think youths are just set up to be like global IP. And I think that they deserve to be in a place where, you know, they can become an official partner of Instagram and Facebook meta and all the things that they're doing. And uh, I think that's what youths is built for. And I think D gods are built for being the best luxury NFT and like being a really strong fucking cult like religion of a fucking NFT. And both of these those directions are pretty different. And so to me, I just don't look at the blockchain itself as the primary driver of the decisions that we make i look at what's the best opportunity on the table and 
I, I would be lying to you if I told you like there was a better opportunity. And there's a lot of opportunities. Like, that's 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 what I can say. I can I'm happy to go into it more. But there's been a lot of opportunities thrown at us. And again, I come back to this is the most clear slam dunk that we've seen in a while. So um, yeah, it's it's gonna be fun. 2023 is gonna be fun. So yeah, I do read a lot of this stuff, but more so to just digest how people react. And then sometimes if people get really triggered, then I think okay, like maybe we should do that more. You're a fucking legend, bro. I'm bullish on you and the whole team, man. Appreciate For you, real. man, dude. It's it's going to be fun, dude. I'm just saying, like, if you're you older, bro, like, I, you should see how it plays out. Let's see how it plays out. I think it's going to be fun. I think the thing that Frank underrepresents is the amount of data that he looks at for the engagement of, and, you know, he somebody was clowning on him for about the video that absolutely destroyed the one that I made. Um, but like, <laughs> I got to see that one. That, well, you it. didn't because it didn't win the A-B test. That's the beautiful <laughs> thing. Like, you think we don't A-B test this stuff. Like, we've got private channels where we test these things. And and the amazing thing, Elon adding view count, has made it pretty great because now you get this really quick signal and you can rip the video down before people even like it and retweet it. And so, yeah, I mean, the, the idea of looking at how people engage and breaking Twitter and not responding and not acting for the first hour and then get on spaces is is not something that he does by mistake, right? Like the idea is to really listen, understand the points and actually, you know, try to be rational. And it's something that we've talked a lot about of the strategy of just listening because a lot of the ideas, no matter how loud or how off the wall they are, end up making us think harder, right? And I think like, you know, that opportunity gives us the time to take a beat, chat internally and then figure out like, okay, what, what we heard, what we learned, and then how do we react or differently, if anything, or how do we respond to what's coming? It's sort of like getting an FAQ fed to you before you have to get on stage. Beautiful. Thank you for that, Kevin, and appreciate the uh, analytics and the insights. And uh, let's go to some hands because I'm sure that people are dying to ask you some questions. I've never seen this many requests in hands. So let's go in order. Tardo, you've been waiting a while. Uh, what's going on? Hey, Frank. Uh, first of all, uh, somebody who's been pretty skeptical, I think the ETH move is a super good one. So props on that. Uh, there was somebody in the space earlier, and I saw some tweets swirling around that you're possibly given a grant uh, to bridge to Polygon. Can you speak on the validity of yeah, that? Yeah, happy to. And I'm sure I'm going to get this, just like the royalty thing, I'm sure I'm going to get this question probably in between eight quintillion and nine quintillion times. And so... Look, I actually have an intention to release like the amount that we got in a grant. I can confirm there was a grant. But what I can also confirm is that it was literally nowhere near the largest grant that we were offered. Like uh, this was not a cash grab by any any terms or, you know, I think that bridging Utes to any blockchain at this point is worth a lot for that blockchain. There were certain blockchains that were willing to pay a a lot of money, like a lot. And uh, Polygon was not anywhere near the highest bidder at all. And so um, this was not a this was not a cash grab. This is a strategic move. And look, we have value in what we do. Someone tweeted, try to dunk on me today. Like, why would you go to fucking Polygon when, you know, Solana did two point five million dollars in volume today and, and Polygon did two hundred thousand. And I was like, well, check check the stats that you're reading. You know, the guys in Utes did one point seven. And I think right now one point eight five of that uh, two point five million. And so for me, I think there's a lot of value to any blockchain. It's a no brainer. So yeah, we did get a grant from Polygon. I think well, Frank, I got a quick question yeah. on that. Uh, with Polygon's metrics over the last seven days being sub 300,000 USD volume, is there any cause of concern with that? Because that's like obviously my biggest concern is the lack of liquidity on Polygon. We saw a huge uptick thanks to the Trump NFTs, but a quick depreciation shortly thereafter, especially as people basically took that liquidity and left. Well, I was going to speak on this and ask at the same time. We were speculating earlier that potentially because a uh, majority of the volume on Solana was coming from Utes and Egots, uh, we were speculating that Frank is kind of thinking like, hey, we're bringing the volume, we're bringing the eyes, we're going to work with these other big brands and we're going to build this shit from the ground up and make this legendary. It's kind of like how we were speculating it, at least uh, until... You're goddamn right. You're 100% one, 100 right. Uh, that's a perfect analysis. I The reason why I'm not worried about the last seven days uh, of volume or whatever the fuck it is right now is because ultimately us making this decision is a bet on ourselves and on our, on our team and ultimately on our community. And so for me, I think like I'm not necessarily worried about that, that side of it. I'm more worried about the fundamentals, which I'm pretty excited on again for a few reasons, like I was mentioning earlier on Polygon, but let me just wrap up my statement before, because again, I know I'm going to get asked this question a million times. Um, 
yes, there was a grant from from Polygon. There was a grant offer from every single blockchain. And when we're going to make a decision like this, we're going to do our research and we're going to talk to every participant in the market. And again, it was just nowhere near the largest grant. If we wanted to do it for money, you would have seen the names of some of the blockchains and then you would have been like, oh, okay, like uh, that that's for money. But this one, uh, no, I think it's really about the strategy that we have going into it. I think the strategy is bootstrapping Polygon to be the next big uh, NFT ecosystem and all of our holders that decide to stick with us and take that risk with us, um, you know, could with the launch pad that we're building out could benefit greatly from that. Because I think we're going to launch this incubator launch pad. I think we already have a few pretty great projects lined up. I think we're going to keep getting more. And uh, yeah, like youths and D-Gods are going to be able to mint that shit with their points portions of that supply. And uh, yeah, I think it's going to be, that's the basic outline of the game plan. Now, it's all about execution, which I'm so hyped to do in 2023. But I think if we do that, it's going to drive a lot of excitement around Polygon NFTs because there people are looking for that. You saw the drive and excitement that people had when Aptos just launched like one day in. Uh, honestly, Polygon, and we criticize them a good amount about this. I don't think they understand really how to drive value in secondary market yet as an ecosystem. Like, I think they're a lot better with just getting big brands and getting them to launch NFTs. But I think what we are pretty much specialists and experts at at this point is like, how do you navigate and manage a community in the uh, secondary and once people already hold it? And that's the game plan is let's bring that. And, uh, you know, let's fucking see. I think it's going to be exciting. I just have a quick question before we go to the next hand. Uh, can I use Ute Points to purchase uh, and reveal Kevin D. God's video, uh, version of the video? Um, I just want to be able to have access Kevin? to that. I think it's a fair ask. I think, uh, I mean, that'll be a one of one. And so like, it'll be high. So you're going to take advantage of leverage, which means your Ute would be locked up for a very long time, which is kind of awesome. But yeah, I, I think Bro, we should explore I, that. I, I was expecting the forever lock up for Lambo or something. And I was kind of disappointed, but uh, I'm just kidding. Um, but yo, let's, let's, I have not seen this many requests in hand. So let's uh, try to cycle through a little bit, keep it short. But I'll try to keep it as balanced as possible, going back and forth from DGA PFPs and none. So, uh, easy. Uh, did you want to follow up on that question real quick? Yeah, I mean, I guess my main question here was: I, I understand there's many parts that went into this, but I'm more curious what the consideration was not to leave Utes on Solana, being the existing. I'm sure, like I do, so I'm not sure what decisions behind the scenes went into it. But my curiosity is like, why not leave Utes on Solana and launch some form of airdrop or D3 on Polygon, basically extending the the opportunity? Yeah, we think that would have been, honestly, for us, the easy way out. Um, it, the thing is, I'm very cognizant of where our team is at, and I think we're going to have to scale a lot slower than uh, people anticipate because it is a bear market at the end of the day, and we're not trying to hyperscale right now and, and get too much bloat. So the idea of us managing like three floors, three projects seems pretty daunting. And uh, I'm not interested in doing an airdrop at this point that we don't feel confident that we can manage and, and do right by. And so um, that was the reason we didn't just do a new... Uh, project on like and polygon and auction it off or whatever it is um but in terms of like why take it off soul i think this is the tougher question at the end of the day uh that you know people are just gonna have opinions and people are emotionally charged but i am under the belief that i think we've i think we've almost capped out on soul like i think it's quite challenging for us to grow at the you know at the rate that we used to on uh on solana and that has that has to do with a lot of different things one it has to do with the fact that it's denominated in soul and the market cap is, for, is pretty down bad. There's less liquidity flowing around. Like the best stat to look at for D-Gods, for example, like, you know, it, our all-time high for D-Gods was like somewhere high in the 30, 30, like 35K plus or something like that. You know, that's like that's like 3,500 soul floor today. Um, and like there's not enough wallets on Solana as a whole to support like that kind of appreciation on any asset right now. And so for us, we look at it like, hey, this is a bear market and people are going to either be passive or they're going to be active. And it feels like for me and for our collections, again, I'm bullish on Solana NFTs. I still hold a lot and I'm a fan of so many people on this chain. And I know the narrative is going to get spun about me that I, uh, I'm i bearish on soul or I hate soul or I'm fucking, you know, betraying soul. I, I, I think my actions will speak louder than my words there. I'm not, I'm not leaving. Uh, I'm like, uh, I want to keep supporting people and helping in any way that I can. But this is more of a business move for our project and our holders that made the most sense and happy to go into more detail there. I know you're going to launch something soon on Soul Easy, and, and now you got the number one spot right for the taking, so I'm excited. <laughs> That's the uh, goal, bro. 
Let's fucking go. That's the thing. How underrated part too. Our, it's it's gonna be fun. I said this. It's gonna be a blast. No, I was bro. gonna say I said I'm this. I'm excited a while to ago. compete. Yeah. Um, the last question I wanted to ask is like, how do you anticipate the bridge process for these NFTs to ETH and Polygon? Because like, my fear is like disparate NFTs and collections. Since there is not an easy way to like we, force the bridging. We asked that earlier. He said he'll release the details in the okay. on a yeah. I'm down. I think we have some really smart ideas here that would get a vast majority of the collection over, um, you know, within a short amount of time. Like not within a short amount yeah. of time from today, but once the once the bridge is actually live and ready, I think there's a set of mechanisms that are like no brainers that I don't know why people wouldn't update that and we'll give a good heads up so people can do it. But my, our thing, our, I think our targets internally are 60 to 70% of the collection uh, with a really, really easy way to do it at any given time. If people are stragglers or they miss the announcement or whatever it is, but aiming to get 60 to 70% of the collection bridged over for both of these bridges, which again, once we do it, it's just going to be the only thing people can talk about. It's going to be a historic moment and I'm, I'm excited for that as well. We just, it's just like probably, you know, going to need to go through fucking 20 audits. We're going to need to get every fucking smart, you know, smart contract. Can't have on. another Exile D-Gods. No, Can't 100%, right? And everyone knows that. The difference between Exile D-Gods and now is like, you know, everybody that we're talking to, whether it's on the, you know, wormhole side with the dust stuff, whether it's on like, uh, you know, the the Polygon side, Solana side, even Metaplex and all these guys. I think everyone wants to see this go well and be a really smooth bridge because this ultimately, you know, when this thing goes through, will be really bullish for the future of, of multi-chain NFTs. And uh, I think we all think to a certain degree the future will be multi-chain. And so happy to be a part, excited to be a part of that history. Uh, that's going to be really fun. No, awesome. Thank you. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Awesome. Uh, great questions, Easy. Thank you for coming through and uh, asking those questions. But uh, let's keep moving on. Uh, ZK Shark, what's going on, brother? Yo, what's going on? And uh, yeah, I think, Frank, the future is multi-chain, but it is definitely a little nerve-wracking right now. But I do have one question for you. Because uh, when I think of traditional bridges, I think of going back and forth, uh, you know, not just a one-way trip. Like, you could actually send assets back and forth, bridge them. And also, I'm kind of concerned if there's someone that just has, like, a D-God in their ledger and doesn't check anything for six months, seven months, like, what happens in that situation. But, uh, yeah, I was curious, is your intention just to have everyone eventually on one chain completely? Or do you kind of, is it all right to kind of coexist on both? That's a great question. I mean, look, I think... <laughs> I think one, these are the types of details where I feel like, you know, we're a little bit early in the process. I think the basic concept is to have it be one way, um, but not burn the NFT and lock it up in an escrow with like a DAO vote, multi-sig or whatever it is. If there's any, ever any nuclear fucking events or whatever it is, like there's that back door uh, for, and again, we wouldn't control it, try to keep it with a multi-sig, whatever it is. Um, but then on the other side too, in terms of like people holding their ledger, I mean, the thing is, it, we do this now, right? Pretty, pretty well. I think we, we do this more than most collections. Like dead gods are forever. Uh, you can always mint a dead god if you have an OGD god. Even if you wake up, you know, after a fucking three year coma, you'll still be able to mint your dead god. Same thing with uh, Utes, right? With tubes. And so we're like pretty used to this mechanic uh, and we use it all the time. And so this would be no different in my mind. No, I appreciate the color there. And yeah, um, and frankly, trust, man, I, I may not agree like leaving Solana, but definitely uh, trust you as a founder and betting on you, even though it may, you know, not agree with everything, I think. But, uh, you know, both to see where this ends up and uh, excited for it, man. Let's go. We were earlier, we were just saying, like, I mean, if it is what it is, and if it's already set in stone, we got to look at the optimistic things and, and speculate on what, you know, we think Frank would do and the team will do. Um, and uh, just, uh, you know, try it. See how you just asked me, bro. I'm, I, I don't think there's much here that, like, again, I even have intention, like, I think we and Kevin were talking about this. I'm super down to, like, open up the amount of the grant, like, that we got from Polygon and, like, just literally open up the fucking contract and all that stuff. I, I really don't care because. We want to build in this space for 10 years, and uh, I'm, I don't really have any patience for hiding things from the public because eventually everything gets out anyway. I think, like, right now it's a little bit fresh, so I think we'll give it, like, a week because I just don't want to, like, you know, give people – everyone's super mad right now. You guys know how crypto Twitter goes. Give it a week. Everyone starts looking at things more rationally. Okay, now we're back. Then I open up more information and, like – You just broke up with us on Christmas, Frank. <laughs> Frank, I think it would be good to think about everything for like a couple of days and come up with like a statement right before New Year's that over encompasses everything like that we talked about 
And uh, I'll provide you with like a synopsis or a, a outline of what we talked about in the space. Yeah, that'd be um, great. 100%. And, yeah. yeah. And then the challenge with New Year's is it moves every hour. We Christmas was nicer because when we could do Christmas, we could really like make sure that everybody was awake and miss their dinners and things like that. And so, yeah, I woke up. My family was like, why'd you only do presents for 20 minutes? Who's this guy, Frank? Keep calling you. Uh, then we ran over and did some more chatting. And Bro, I think it was perfect. Presents. CT was kind of boring with, with Christmas going on, so we needed something. But uh, all jokes aside. We, yeah, yeah, our families were not giving us the kind of dopamine pumps we needed, all right? So this is perfect for us. Yeah, I had yeah. to hold off the dinner uh, to wait for 3.30, p.m. So, uh, yeah, guys. Um, yeah, but thanks for coming through and answering these questions. We got a bunch more. Uh, if you don't mind, let's quickly cycle through these. Uh, I do want to go to Patty Ice, the homie, real quick, and then we'll go to um, Sid, and then we'll go to Don Stallion, and then Intern, and then the board ape, Just, Justin. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. What up, Doc? Uh, everybody. But uh, when you decided to come over to Polygon, did Donald Trump send you like a DM, like, "Bitch, this is my area. Like, what the fuck are you thinking?" Bro, this no, is a serious it's gonna be when we flip Trump, right? That's going to be on day one when we flip Trump. It's like now he's got to respond, right? Unless the man wants to take an L. So that should be fun. Sorry, I didn't mean to be funny off rip. But there was a like easy ask, probably the question I was going to ask. Um, and then ZK followed up with the other question I was going to ask. So uh, my question is, I know you're a very calculated individual. And like, um, I, I know you don't or you really probably can't talk about uh, future plans or um, future partnerships and stuff like that. But as far as the Polygon ecosystem, you know, I, I've used Polygon. I, I really didn't, you know, it was more the DeFi days and stuff. Uh, but as far as N NFTs go and like communities over there, um, what kind of data had you gotten as far as like, you know, the, like the vibes over there? Like, have you done any research to kind of Yeah, that's a great question, Patty. I've done a ton. Um, it's super mid right now. I'm not going to lie. Like it's pretty mid. Um, there's not a lot of activity. There's not a lot of great collections on there. There's some cool projects that are like, you know, just small having, tar having a hard time getting attraction and attention. I think that this year there's like a, a stupid amount of catalysts that are coming up for Polygon. Some of them I'm not at Liberty, I guess to share yet, but it's like soon. But then the more public ones that are pretty obvious are like, uh, you know, like fucking phantom wallet. Like I think people underrate how crucial phantom wallet itself has been to the rise of you know what everyone loves about solana like what people love about solana and people always say solana ux is the best well i mean yeah it is but who are the guys that are building the best ux experiences on solana i mean phantom wallet is up there probably in some of the you know probably one of the best if not the best wallet application in all of crypto right now and they're integrating polygon and mainnet eth this year and obviously you know, we got our history. We're all soul boys at the end of the day. So uh, I imagine like we're going to work on some cool stuff there to make it even more easy to bridge and, and get people to get capital on the on the polygon. But I also think like they're, they're really heating up in terms of just getting people to stick to, to using polygon. I think we're going to be a big catalyst there, too. But I, overall, I just see a lane where, again, like narratives form very quickly in crypto uh, where we get enough great projects over there through our launch pad. And uh, I think it's going to be a self-fulfilling prophecy of there's going to be a run on, on like people wanting to get Polygon NFTs. And there's things down the line too, that are really interesting that would make it not even feel like you're on Polygon and you just be denominating everything in ETH. And so, yeah, I think people are very quick to, to write things off, but uh, I see like a lot of, I don't know. I see a lot of potential. Bro, there isn't being on Polygon, but it's not that great right now. Isn't that like basically being on ETH because like you can access it on OpenSea the same way and it's like you, you use wrap ETH instead of regular ETH and shit like yeah, that, the right? Worst like, part of which is kind of a headache. The worst part of the Polygon UX is the fact that it takes 30 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes to bridge from like mainnet ETH to Polygon like wrapped ETH. Like that is definitely the worst part by far. So I think that some of the things they propose are going to solve that like this year and like you know, once that happens, it's going to be pretty seamless. And again, you, you, people want to be early to stuff, but they don't actually want to be early. Like, that's what I learned. Right. So I don't know. I'm, no. I'm bullish on this. That's I'm, I'm old. So 30 minutes is my power nap time. So like I could move something, get a power nap in, wake up, check. This is good be harder news for people to pay for hand. So it'd be great. Yeah, I mean, no as we up. talk about the, the bridge and the, the ideas that we've explored, like, I mean, the goal is one click, right? One click, one transaction and having the smart contracts work behind the scenes and be wired together so that it's literally one click, including writing the message cross chain and, and taking the new wallet. 
And that's going to require a bunch of partners to work together. And I think we're excited to see how far we can push that um, to make that possible. Because that would be the most delightful thing. That it literally just shows up in a different tab in your wallet, right? Like that would be the goal. Um, and again, you know, we'll see how far we can get with that in the timelines that we've set for ourselves. But that, that's please sort make of it too quick. Uh, Kevin, by the way, good news. Uh, uh, Phantom was up in my DMs asking if I knew any hype VFX editors for their next video when they drop the Polygon and ETH integration. So uh, totally going to need that video from you for uh, to show them what you can do. Oh, sir, sir, I would appreciate the intro. 